This is the first of a multi-part series that will cover the Garmin GNC 300XL GPS and communications radio. In this presentation, we'll introduce the unit and review the basic interface. We'll also take a look at the operation of the COM radio. The information presented herein is advisory in nature and does not cover all functionality. For any discrepancy between the content in this video and the manufacturer's guidance, the manufacturer's guidance shall take precedence. Pilots must consult their aircraft POH and supplement section for detailed information regarding their specific installation and seek instruction from a knowledgeable certified flight instructor before operating this unit in flight. The Garmin 300XL is the flagship product in a family of moving map GPS comms introduced in the early 2000s. For aircraft equipped with an annunciator panel and indicator, the 300XL can be certified for IFR en route, terminal, and approach operations. As a non-WAS receiver, though, vertical approach guidance is not available. Check the aircraft POH for details about your specific installation. The XL family shares a number of common features, but may be limited in capability as shown here depending on model. None, however, include a VOR navigation receiver. The aircraft we will be using for this series is equipped with a full IFR installation of the GNC 300XL. The equipment includes a GPS comm unit itself, a group of three annunciators, two of which are also switches, and a separate indicator as shown here. The layout of the GNC 300XL is straightforward. The display area shows the active and standby communication frequencies at all times, while the remainder of the screen is reserved primarily for GPS-related information. The upper and lower key groups allow the pilot to interact with the unit and select the various functions. We'll cover these in detail in this and future episodes. A dual concentric set of knobs in the lower right include an inner and outer knob used to navigate through pages and change data. The power volume knob in the lower left is used to turn the unit on and off and to adjust the radio volume. The nav data card, which can be updated by the user, is located on the far left side and is inserted with a tab oriented toward the top. A photocell on the upper left detects surrounding light and adjusts the screen display accordingly. This can be manually adjusted in the unit settings covered in the following episode. To turn the unit on, rotate the combined power and volume knob located in the lower left clockwise. The most recent active and standby communication frequencies will be displayed along the top. The current system operating software will be shown and the unit will conduct a brief self-test. Once the diagnostic test is complete, the installed database information will be shown. This includes the effective date, expiration date, and the nav data cycle number. To acknowledge the database status, press the Enter key in the upper right. The next screen will show the satellite acquisition status. The word acquiring will remain visible while the GPS initializes. For each satellite number, the relative signal strength will be indicated from a low of 1 to a high of 9. A line indicates the associated satellite is in view, but the GPS is not receiving a signal. You can use a small inner knob to scroll to the left and right to see additional satellites. Once a position fix has been determined, the GPS will display the position page as shown here and issue a message that the unit is ready for navigation. At this point, the initialization process is complete and the unit is ready to go. Let's take a moment to discuss the message function and how it works. When the GNC 300XL needs to communicate a message or alert to the pilot, the amber light next to the message key will blink. If the aircraft is equipped with a remote message annunciator, that will also flash. It is important to review messages in a timely fashion as the information can be critical to flight safety. To display a new message, press the message key. Once you have reviewed the message, press the message key again to clear it. The GNC 300XL features a 760 channel VHF comm radio with 25 kHz spacing. The display screen can be generally divided into two parts. The top line is usually reserved for the communication frequencies, while the remainder of the display contains GPS related information. The active frequency is always shown in the upper left of the display area under the label ACTV etched into the faceplate. The standby frequency is usually shown to the right, but in the map mode will be shifted under the active frequency as shown here. 
Frequencies in GPS data fields can only be changed when the desired field has been highlighted. To do so, the pilot uses the cursor key in the upper right. Pushing the cursor key once will highlight the standby calm frequency and allow the pilot to enter a new frequency. Pushing the cursor key a second time will highlight the first available GPS field that can be edited. A third press of the cursor key will remove the field highlight so nothing can be changed. The cursor operation can be frustrating and is one of the shortcomings of an otherwise good interface. It is common to inadvertently change a frequency or GPS field because the pilot pressed the cursor key and began editing without first confirming the desired field had been highlighted. To change the standby communication frequency, press the cursor key once and confirm the standby frequency is highlighted. Then use the concentric knobs to tune the desired frequency just as with any typical radio. The outer knob controls the megahertz and the inner knob the kilohertz. Just remember big knob, big number, small knob, small number. To swap the active and standby frequencies, push the transfer key in the upper right. When finished, you can deactivate the cursor to prevent inadvertently changing the standby frequency. To do this, press the cursor key twice. The communications radio incorporates automatic squelch control, though there are times when you may wish to deactivate it. The squelch button located on the left side of the lower keys does just this. Press it once to deactivate automatic squelch, and then press it again to reactivate. You may wish to deactivate the automatic squelch control to adjust the initial volume level when the active frequency is silent. Whenever the pilot is keying the microphone and transmitting, the letters TX appear next to the active frequency. If the continuous transmit time exceeds 35 seconds, the GNC 300XL will disable the transmitter to prevent a stuck microphone condition. A message will also be triggered. Releasing the key will clear the condition and allow you to transmit again. When making a lengthy transmission, such as a pilot report, you may wish to interrupt the transmission briefly by releasing the transmit key momentarily before re-engaging. One nice shortcut design allows the pilot to load the emergency frequency 121.5 MHz directly into the active position by pressing and holding the frequency transfer key. The GNC 300XL allows the pilot to transfer a communications frequency from the GPS display area directly to the comm standby position. To do so, press the cursor key twice and highlight the GPS data field containing the frequency desired. Then simply press the enter key to copy the frequency. This concludes part one of the GNC 300XL series. In upcoming episodes, we'll cover the remaining GPS functions and provide in-flight demonstrations, including instrument approach procedures. If you found this presentation helpful, please like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks.